So Dave, thanks for joining us again. No problem, good to see you Rob. So this time is the guide light. So I know that we've just run through the guide, which is, you know, must be the best selling pack I would imagine within the collection. It's, it's kind of the climbers mountaineers pack. It's this, it's, you know, been in the range forever. Now the guide light offers a, well, as you'd expect a lighter weight alternative. And I know from just chatting to you just then that actually the guide light is your, or the guide light, particularly in the 30 liter model is your favorite pack in the range. Yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> it is. Yeah, um, and I think as we, as we were saying, you know, it's um, it, it's got all of those kind of um, core attributes to the bag, but without the weight. And that's something I really like about this particular pack. Um, you know, I can I can use it for a whole range of mountain activities, but I don't have to carry that weight. Um, but equally, understand the sacrifice that I'm not going to get the durability necessarily from it. Or if I really load this pack up then I certainly won't get that carry comfort from the pack that you'd get from the 34. So you've got to understand its limits. But I think when you do that, it's an awesome pack. It's great. Yeah. So do you want to dive into the features? Because I know, well, one, there's a lot of features. I mean, it's maybe light by name, but not by features. Yeah, for sure. I think um, you know, that's definitely one of the things we've, we've packed it with is, uh, is features. Again, just to give it that versatility more than anything. You can see we've got it kind of loaded up here with the uh, the helmet holder on the front here. And this is something that we've added to all of our guide series now. So previously you would have to go out and buy one of these before you could then attach your helmet in this sort of fashion to the pack. So, you know, we felt this was something that was uh, worth adding, um, you know, in terms of value to the bag. And it's now something that, you know, clips off the pack really easily if you're not going to use it. And the helmet comes off, obviously you can, Put that on now but then this just stashes away into its own pocket in the lid of the bag when you're not using it so you know a super simple system but really effective um, and equally if you're adding extra gear to the pack then it can act as a little stash area uh, or a shell or you know or for other kit if, if need be in there you can see it's got a really clean sort of look and finish to it obviously the usual daisy chain the features running down there but you know, a simple axe attachment system, which all pretty familiar with, really. Um, you know, I can kind of quickly zoom in there and show how that operates, holds the pack on, and then a really simple elastic loop and compression buckle, and away you go. You know, axe is on the pack, it's, it's dead easy. Um, so there's nothing really to go wrong here. Um, if you need to replace any of the elastics, you can access them from the inside and replace them. It's dead simple. You can do that at home. Uh, you know, after years of use, you know, these things do eventually wear out. They're simply replaced. So, um, yeah, really simple axe attachment in there. The lid of the pack is extendable as well and removable. So we can take the lid off this pack very simply by undoing the compression buckles on the side, and you can see that actually the strap comes with the lid. So we're reducing weight as well as faff, I guess. Um, so once this lid's off the pack, actually none of the straps that attach it to the main body of the bag are actually left on bag. So the bag now is super clean and really lightweight. So it's got this really cool look about it still but equally it's lost all of the things that would dangle and flap around that risk getting caught or you, or you have to tuck them away somewhere or tie knots around them is, is what most do. Um, but it just gives you that, you know, super reduced, clean, lighter weight pack. So something we've not had before in this area. Um, and again, for me, you know, just, just makes it a really versatile piece. Back system as well. We've got a more simplified and stripped down design, do we, within the guide light? We have, yes. I mean, it, you know, from a video perspective, maybe it doesn't look so different. Uh, but again, if I can zoom in a touch, we've not got quite the depth on the pads on this pack. So we've still got the capacity for air movement uh, and great comfort, but not the depth in the padding. And we use a Delrind sort of hoop an N-shaped sort of rod that inserts into the internal side of the frame system here to give it the stability and shape. Um, but it does mean that 
you need to just be that little more careful in the way that you pack the, the bag to make sure that, uh, you know, when it's on the back, it maintains that high level of comfort, I guess. Um, the other benefit with this pack is that actually we've made the hip belt and harness removable as well. Pre uh, previously, this was all fixed on the pack and all you could do is just wrap it around out of the way. Uh, in this instance, it can come off the bag and again, you can reduce the weight right down. And I think we, we dropped the bag to just over 650 grams, I think, once you've got everything stripped off this pack. So uh, it does a super job, you know, really nice clean pack for you know, that kind of all mountain activity, really, as we it's said. It's interesting because whilst, you know, we've talked about obviously the weight reduction and the such like and the durability, but this is still far from like, a, you know, you know, when you see like some of the sacrifices that brands are willing to make with regards to say the Denny and Nylon, the material used, this is still a pretty burly pack in the grand scheme of things, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, it'll definitely stand up for itself. You know, it's, uh, you know, when we talk about going lightweight and, uh, you know, and kind of, um, you know, reducing the durability of packs, um, the, the gap isn't so wide that actually you take this out once and you've suddenly, you know, you've suddenly got something that doesn't work anymore. I mean, it, it, it cannot work like that. Um, you know, the boy the ethos for years has been, you know, it's been all about making sure that, um, you know, we, we get life out of our products rather than necessarily, you know, make them in ways that are uh, more sustainable, I guess, initially, um, you know, the recycled fabrics have been around a long time, but actually for us in the early days, they didn't have the durability. They didn't have the capacity to last as long. And therefore, yes, we could make that move, but you'd be replacing the bag very quickly. And that, that for us is not the way to do it. Now we've got technologies there that allow us to do it in those fabrics, but actually we get the durability out of it. And uh, you know that's something down the road for this pack. Um, we've got other things in the range that we're now using, uh, you know, with the kind of recycled fabric technologies in there. But the big thing for us is that we're PFC free across this collection now. So as of the beginning of last year, uh, we've wiped out completely all of the PFCs that we would have used for DWR treatments in our collection and uh, yeah, we're 100% PFC free. So, you know, a big step for us in the right direction. It's interesting. I was chatting with uh, someone else about DWR on packs and it's, it's interesting because with our jackets, for instance, with our, you know, waterproofs, we really reg, well, we should regularly uh, treat them with aftercare products, you know, Nick Wax or Granger's or such yeah. like. Whereas packs are one of these things which had this DWR, which obviously degraded over time, had this environmental impact, but with something that actually none of us seem to care about in many ways because of the fact that we'd never <laughs> retreat a pack. And yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure how you tend to operate, but within how I have always gone about packing, uh, I never view a pack as waterproof anyway because of the fact that, well, Britain's just too wet, isn't it? Water always finds a way in, which is why I use dry bags a lot of the time. Which yeah, means, yeah, again, yeah. you haven't yeah. necessarily got that same reason for the DWR in the way you used to have it, perhaps. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you look at this pack, there's a million and one holes in this bag that we've uh, we've stitched into it, you know. It's the nature of making a pack, and, and unlike waterproof jackets, you know, right now it's not commercial to, to tape those seams, you know. Um, however, it is fair to say that we do make the packs with waterproof fabric. You know, all of our products have a standard hydrostatic head to a great degree. So, you know, we have waterproof fabrics with a water repellent finish that we put on there. So certainly in the early days of your pack, you're going to get that you know, capacity to sort of feel it is waterproof, actually. It's almost there. Um, but over the life of the bag, for sure, that wears off. And uh, But there's products out there. You know, you can, you can retreat, you know, the surface of your pack in the same way that you do. Um, you know, the, the surface of your waterproof jacket. So, you know, there's, there's plenty of info out there from various companies that do a great job. Well, I think the take home message here is, you know, if you're after lighter weight, the guide light is the one for you. If you're after basically greater carrying comfort and also that usability, not some of those nice features like the, the J zip, then, then the Deuto guide range is the one for you. So it's say two different sort of, customer groups really hopefully have a you know agenda of their own which will lead them one way or the other yeah definitely and hopefully you know if uh, 
if they're struggling to make that choice and they can watch the two, the two different videos here, then uh, hopefully they end up with enough information to, uh, to choose the right one, you know. Well, hopefully we'll get one of each in for review later this year. And I think it will probably be Dan Bailey, our Scottish correspondent, our Scottish gear correspondent, who will be out in the mountains as and when he can actually get out into the mountains again. Yeah, good luck to him. Yeah, yeah. we've got our fingers crossed to get out locally as well. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, sometime soon. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks for taking us through this, Dave. It's been great to catch up.